Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Today, we have three more brand new stories, so if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story, about a lady who wanted to pay for the cakes with a business check. I'm going to tell everyone I know to never shop here again. So let me start off by saying I take the blame for this. It was basically my fault. And the woman has good reason to be upset. But there's a strong difference between being respectful about it and being an extremely disrespectful child about it. Once someone starts cussing me or a coworker out and or acting like a crying child, I lose respect for them. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Anyway, I work at a very large grocery store chain on the East Coast. Customer will be C, I will be me, my manager will be manager. So, early in the morning, like 9 a.m. or so, I get a call at the customer service desk and the lady asks if she can pay for cakes with a check. I tell her yes, because things can be paid for with a check. What I forgot to tell her, though, is that to pay with a check, you need our store card, and that the name on the check has to match the store card. That was my fault, obviously. My bad. So skip to about 2 p.m. The lady shows up with all these cakes in her cart for some office party she's having. I was told earlier today I could pay for these cakes with a check. Somebody at the bakery said they've never done that before, but I told them, no worries. I was just told I could, so I'll just go to customer service. Manager, who happened to be near the desk at the time. Sure, no problem. Do you have your store card with you? Um, no. Do you have a store card at all? Um, no, I have this business check and that's it. I was told I could pay with it. And fortunately, without a store card, I won't be able to do the transaction. Does your company have a store card with us? No, I was told I could use a check earlier this morning and I'm now here. And you're telling me I can't? Unfortunately, without a store card, we can't do a check transaction. Is there any way maybe the company could reimburse you if you paid for it? No, that's why I have the business check. This is ridiculous. I was told I could use a check. You need to train your employees better. Do you by any chance know who you spoke to? Me overhearing the conversation. Oh, um, hey manager, that was me this morning she spoke to on the phone. I told her yes to the check. Well, unfortunately, without a store card, we won't be able to do the transaction. This is BS. He told me I could pay with a check. Ma'am, we physically cannot do the transaction without a store card. I'm sorry. This is absolutely ridiculous. I was told I could use a check, and now I'm here and told that I can't? I have an office party in 20 minutes I need to go to. I need these now. Sorry, ma'am, but it's our policy that we need a store card to be able to do a check. What are your names? I'm going to tell everyone I know what happened here today and to never shop here. I will never shop here again. You just lost a customer. Train your employees better. She takes down our names and walks a bit to the side and calls corporate. At this time, my manager calls the store manager and asks him if there's anything we can do. And the store manager says, we can do the transaction for her today, but it's up to you on whether or not you want to. Meanwhile, the customer is talking massive crap about us on the phone and taking very low blows. I didn't hear what she said, but my manager did. She walked back over to us. You just lost a customer today. I hope you know that. Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. She looked at the cakes, then looked at us. Ha! Good luck with the cakes! And pushed the cart forward towards us a bit, then walked away. At this time, I felt pretty bad because it was my fault for saying yes to the check. Sorry, manager. That was my fault. It was me who said yes to her. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Manager. It's fine. No problem at all. We're all human. We make mistakes and we learn from them. But she didn't get that. She decided to be completely disrespectful. I called the store manager. He said we could have done the transaction for her, but she was being so rude to you and me. I heard what she said on the phone, so I didn't do it for her. My man. In comes the customer again. I'm going to have my boss come and pick up the cakes. LOL. And we're going to tell your boss what an awful employee you must be. And we're going to share this on the internet. And our next story. You sold my donation? Let me check in the back. I know you still have it. I work as a supervisor in a thrift store that partners with a nonprofit organization. When people donate at our store, they're actually donating to the nonprofit, and we pay them by the pound for the items. Think of them as our supplier. 
There are two ways to donate. A truck will drive through the neighborhood at a scheduled time to pick up donations, or you can donate right at our store. Naturally, we often get donors who have donated an important item by mistake and want it back. We fill out a sheet with as good a description as we can to post at our production station so the team can look out for it when they process. Unfortunately, most items are never found because production's processing speed is around a day or two, depending on how much inventory we have, and donors will report their items missing many days after they're given to us. We do our best, but if the item's gone, it's gone. That brings us to our story. A woman came in who donated a kid's swim shirt, and I completed the form with a good description and with the items the shirt was donated with. Her item was donated at 6 p.m. the previous day. I tell her production leaves daily at 3.30. It's around 2 now, so we may have a chance. She stands by the entrance to the back and watches me go in and ask around for the item. I now discover that processing has been fast today, and most carts of product have been processed already. Any cart I can find with product on it is labeled with today's date, meaning her items weren't on it because they were given to us the night before. I go back to the front to tell her the clothes have been put out already and that we can check the sales floor for the shirt. We look around, don't find anything. She's disappointed but thanks me and leaves when I tell her we'll continue to keep our eye out in case we see it. Fast forward to around 7 or 8 that night, I'm paged to the front, and who do I see but the lady from this afternoon? Our conversation goes like this. D for donor, M for moi. M. Hello, ma'am. Our production team's gone home for the day, and unfortunately, they processed every cart in the building, so I'm afraid your item is either on the floor or sold. Okay, but I don't understand. How could they have processed it all? Me. Well, we didn't have many carts to go through today, so they were able to finish it all today. Do you see why this makes no sense to me? I'm sorry, no. You told me earlier today production takes one to two days on average to process. I donated it 6 p.m. yesterday. It takes a minimum of one day. It hasn't even been 24 hours of processing time. Oh, brother. Ma'am, that was an average time. Day by day, the time it takes to process will be a little different. Nope, I'm not buying that. You're making no sense to me. Let me check. I'm sorry, I can't let you do that. It'd be a breach of policy. Nobody knows my item like me. I bet you looked right at it and had no idea what it was. The description you gave me was correct, yes? That's what I was looking for, and I didn't see it. Let me back there now. Nobody knows my item but me, and I know it's still back there. It's impossible that it's back there, as all carts in the building have been processed. I'm going on vacation soon, and I need that item for my own peace of mind. Let me back there to see my item. Okay, peace of mind, fine, I'll do it. So I take the woman to the back. She immediately points out several items she had donated hung on racks and takes this to be a sign that her kid's shirt is there. For a second, I think, crap, if she finds her item, I'm going to have to apologize that I didn't look hard enough. But lo and behold, we tour the entire back, all racks of unpriced clothing, all 36 empty carts, and even the hard goods table where they don't process shirts at all. Getting frantic, she demands to look through the recycling bins, clothing with holes, stains, etc., and I remind her that if her item was new with tags, it wouldn't have been recycled. And if it's not on the floor, it's sold. I take this woman out of the production room and apologize again, oh so sweetly, that we couldn't find her item. She begins to woe and sigh that I guess it wasn't meant to be, and she hopes whatever mom bought my item enjoys it, as if I'll feel bad for her and take her item out of my butt where I've been deliberately hiding it from her all day. She's off on her way, and I do a quick once-over as she goes and check the cameras as well to make sure she didn't create this elaborate ruse to steal donations. All clear, but that's the length I'll go to prove my store's honesty. I just hope she doesn't continue to mull it over and conclude that we stole the item. Retail Performance Art Grocery store work can be tough some days. Every now and then, though, I have a customer that makes my day better. In this story, I'm me, and the gentleman customer is GC. GC, putting groceries on the belt. Hey, why's your light out? Me, looking up, the light with my check stand number is out. Oh, crap, I forgot. I flick it on. Uh, I mean, it was a test. GC, a test? Me, yeah, sure. I was uh, checking to see how long it'd take before somebody noticed. Like my boss. <laughs> GC, oh, I like it. An interactive social puzzle, huh? Me, hmm, more like an interactive social experiment. How do people react to the odd contradiction? 
Is the lane open? Can the lane be open if the light is off? GC. Hmm, it's retail performance art. I love it. Me. Oh my god. I pause in ringing up his items. This puts my entire life in a new context. GC. Well, you're doing a fabulous job. Me. Finishing up his order. Am I? Or am I just pretending to do a fabulous job? GC. That's good. Pays for his stuff. I'll come back if there's a return engagement. Me. Ha! It's like five shows a week, sir. GC. Well, I hope you get good reviews. I'll tell my friends. <laughs> and with that, he walked off with his bags, and I had to keep my smile dialed down for the rest of the afternoon. Retail performance art is going to be my new work mantra when things get rough. And our next story. Customer says she's owner's wife and gets a discount. From 1993 to 2008, my husband and I owned a hobby shop outside Atlanta, Georgia. I had a full-time job with Ma Bell, a.k.a. Hell South, and Hubs ran the shop. After 9-11, he was called up for active duty, he was a reservist, and I'd been laid off so I would work in the shop until I had to pick our kids up from school. One morning, a woman comes in and is looking at various games workshop figures and box sets. These are not cheap by any means, and retailers didn't get the normal markdown from the manufacturer, so they were rarely discounted. She approaches the counter to check out, and as I'm ringing her up, she rather rudely tells me that she gets a 50% discount as she's the owner's wife. Me. Really? How long you been married? Lying customer. Oh, a few months. We recently got married. Me. Really? Well, damn. It's nice to meet you, since I'm his wife and the one he Fs at night and not you. You still want this figure pack or not? Because you're not getting a discount. Lying customer stood there like a fish out of water, the way her mouth was opening and closing. I set the figure pack under the counter and told her to get out of my shop and never come back. After she left, I called my hubs to tell him about it, and he was like, just damn, what the hell? Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.